Hallelujah. I want to thank God that I was once a student and where I was learning, I was fortunate to learn also physical science at school. Hallelujah. Uh, in physical science, we were doing the thing, uh, the elements. Hallelujah. And we were taught about the elements, the sodium and chlorine. Maybe most of us, we know sodium and we know chlorine. Hallelujah. Sodium is an element. It is good. It can make so many things. But if you can try to consume sodium alone, your body will dehydrate. You will lose the fluid in your body and you can die by consuming it. Hallelujah. And the chlorine, also it is good. Those who are in the industry where they deal with chemicals, they know it. It is good to make cleaning products. But if you can swallow it, then you can die. It is too dangerous. Hallelujah. If you can swallow it, you may die. Hallelujah. It is physical science. Hallelujah. So on those things, the two elements, I learned something. If you mix sodium and chlorine together, they make a good thing. But when you consume it alone, it is dangerous. When you mix them together, you get the product that is called salt. The salt that we are consuming today is a good product. It has taste. But when you consume chlorine or sodium alone, it is dangerous. Hallelujah. So there are things that if they are not mixed together, they are useless or they are dangerous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe those who study science at school, they are with me. Hallelujah. You mix sodium and chlorine together, you get salt. Those who were partaking on the grace of Daniel fasting, you know very well that if you eat food without salt, it's tasteless. Which means that food without salt is useless. But we partake for the sake of others. We were praying for the sake of others. We, 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 we get away. We move away from our choice food because of others. Hallelujah. Now, that is not the case. I don't want to speak about Daniel fasting. But I want to speak about the two things that we mix together and make a good product that we all enjoy after. Hallelujah. If you put salt in, a, in, a, in your food, whether there's oil or there's no oil, but you will feel the taste. The food will be tasteful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, that is it. I don't want to speak more about physical science and the elements. I want to speak about the word of God. Hallelujah. L allow me to speak about faith. What is faith? Hallelujah. Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about the things we do not see. In other words, faith is believing. You believe something that you don't have and you believe that I have it already. Whether you are not seeing it or is there or not, but your faith must tell you that I already have it. That is called faith. And faith is a spiritual force. You cannot touch it. You cannot see it. But it is there. My Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You hear the word of God, then faith develop. But without you reading the word of God, then you cannot have faith. Hallelujah. It is a spiritual force. It is something that comes after hearing something. Maybe you hear other people talking, then you believe what they say. That is faith. So it means that we have different types of faith. There are intellectual faith, faith that you read. You go to school, you go to the school of theology, then they will say things to you, then you believe. That is called faith, intellectual faith. The faith that you put in your mind is there in your mind, not in the heart. It's called intellectual faith. There is the faith that saves. 
that we come in front here and we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we receive salvation because we believe that he is the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is this faith, demonic faith. Remember the demons also believe that Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. They believe and they know that Jesus is the Lord. The only thing is that they don't follow him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So today I am not going to talk under the topic that says faith. I am going to speak under the topic that says faith without work is dead. Hallelujah. The faith that you receive, the faith that you receive when you hear the word of God is the faith that will give you salvation. You come here at the front and say, now I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. That is the faith that we are talking about. The faith that a sinner have had when he, he received Jesus Christ, he he abandoned the former ways of life and say, now I want to come to Christ. I want to believe in him. Then he accepted Jesus Christ. Let us go to the word of God in James chapter 2. You can start from verse 14 to 26. Chapter 2 from verse 14 to 26. It says in NIV, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied, accompanied by, by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I'll show you my faith by my deeds. Hallelujah. The faith that we are going to talk about today is the faith that uh, James is talking about. Maybe we all know who James is, who was. James was the brother of Jesus Christ, the younger brother of Jesus Christ. He wrote, I am not here to contradict what Paul says. What Paul says when he says we are not uh, saved by uh, uh, works, we are saved by faith. He meant from those who are from this kingdom of darkness or from the world when they come there is nothing that they did for them to receive salvation but they just believe and when they believe they receive salvation now I am going to talk about the faith of the Christians people who are already in Christianity people who know the truth people who read the word of God hallelujah people who know the word of God James is speaking about people who are saying they are Christians, they are believers. Now, if you are a believer, show me, show me your faith. I said faith is a spiritual force. You cannot see it. But I can see that that person has faith. How am I going to see that you have faith? It means that there must be something that you do to show somebody that you have faith. If you speak by your mouth that I am a believer and I have faith, but your words differ from what you believe in, then your faith is dead. You are speaking it. You are confessing it, but it is not there in your heart. That is what it is called intellectual faith. Faith of reading, faith of studying. You study you take it in your mind. You believe in it, but you don't act on it. Hallelujah. Many of us as Christians today, we are speaking, we are quoting verses. But when situation come, your faith now is useless. You don't act upon what you believe in. Why is that? Faith is believing. 
Yes, but act on it. There must be an evidence of your faith. If you go outside the world and preach the word of God, that it, it means that you are acting upon what God has said upon your life. But if you can go out and say, I am a Christian, but continue to do things that you were doing before you are born again, people will laugh at you. Because there is no difference between the person who was and the person who is. When you say, I have faith in Jesus Christ, I have faith, you must accompany it by your good works. Let the people see your good works. Then they will say, yeah. That person is a child of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I am not saying go out and do the good works alone without faith. It does not work alone. That's why I said if you eat chlorine alone, you will die. If you go and do the good works alone without faith, it's useless. And if you have faith... Without good deeds, it is also useless. You are like a loud sound. You are just sounding, but with nothing. Hallelujah. When situation come, let the situation find the true faith inside you. A genuine faith. A faith that can stand the test. A faith that can stand trials. But if your faith cannot stand trials, your faith is dead. Because you are speaking it, but you are not acting it. You are not doing anything about your faith. Yes, you believe. Even the demons believe. What is the difference between you and demons if you are just believing and do nothing? So let us use our faith. Let us act on our faith. There must be a difference between a believer and a non-believer. Abantu, they are no longer coming to church. We are the same. Because if you come out of this church, you go back to your old deeds. If I was a prostitute and come here and stand here in front and say, Lord, I accept you. But when I go back, I go back to my business. I stand here. I said, Lord, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. But the deeds are still the same. Am I a child of God? Am I have, do I have a genuine faith? Or I was just saying it by my mouth. There are things that we just say by our mouth. We must act on the word of God. James says in chapter 1 verse 22, be you the doers of the word. We don't just hear the word of God and do nothing. You want to receive something. You want to be healed. Jesus cannot come to your home and heal you. You must take another step for your healing. Hallelujah. You cannot say as long as I accepted Jesus Christ, it's okay. No. No. There are things that you must do to show that you really you believe in him. I read in the word of God about the woman, the woman of the issue of the blood. With the issue of the blood. The Bible says she heard that Jesus Christ is passing by. She didn't say, I, I know, I believe that yes, he, he, he can heal me. Yes, she believed and she took another step. She went out. She stayed away from all the, those things. She took her blankets away and ran and say, she said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I believe I will be whole again. I believe I will be healed. So there are things that you must do. There are things that must accompany your faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us take the gospel to the people. Let us believe in what we are saying. You know, if you can take a can of Coke, let's say a, an empty can of Coke, you can take it and maybe it's empty, there's nothing inside. But if I can hold it and like this, 
you will believe that there is coke inside. Why? Because of the label. We are just labeled as Christians, but what is inside is different. Our works are different. We are just a label. We are just a brand. We just want the name. But our works are different. Why is that? We speak, we read about love, but where is the work of love in us? Let us do what the word says we must do. Let us do what Jesus Christ says we must do. We quote, Luke 10, 19 is in us. Let the situation come. Let the situation come. Let the challenges come. Luke, Luke 10, 19 is only in the head. But on this, it's not there. We must see that Luke 10, 19 really is in you when you stand the trials, when you stand the test. That's where we know that, yeah, that is the child of God. But if you run away from the challenges, where is Luke 10, 19? Where is the God of fire? You believe in him with the mind. In the heart, you believe something. Hallelujah. We must be the doers of the word. Our good works must accompany our faith. Hallelujah. Let our good works accompany the faith that we say we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We learn about our father Abraham. The Bible says he was justified by faith. But his faith was not just faith. He was doing what God commanded him to do. It means that he was doing something on top of his faith. Hallelujah. He did something on top of his faith. God says, Abraham, you are going to, to be the father of nations. Abraham was given a son named Isaac. Hallelujah. And God says, Abraham, go and sacrifice the child that you have. Go and sacrifice the son that you have. He didn't say, Lord, I am afraid. How am I going to be the father of nations if I kill the only son that you have given to me? He did not question God. Tina, here we do the talk, but the work is not there. We are busy talking, talking. Let us do the work of God. Let us talk and do. Hallelujah. If you are just doing the talking, you are like a... A, a loud voice, a loud sound that has nothing in it. An empty tin of can. You know if you throw that empty tin of can with that label, the good label in it, if I step on it, it will lose shape. It is like a person with an intellectual faith and they have nothing inside. When you provoke that person, the person will lose shape. The person will lose faith will lose hope because the faith was not in the heart. The faith was not in action. The faith was just in the mind. Hallelujah. Let us have faith in God so that we will be able to stand in times of trial and tribulation. We are here in South Africa. There are no people who come here in church and point us with guns or bombs. But we cannot stand. Our faith cannot show. We cannot show our faith. Children of God, let us not fool ourselves. The kingdom of God is not just about lips. It's about doing what God says we must do. If you don't do what God is saying you must do, what do you want to do? You will obey what is in another kingdom. If you don't obey God, you will obey the devil. Rebellion is not from God. Rebellion is not from God. If really we are the children of God, let us act on what God is saying. Disobedience is not from God. 
Jesus Christ obeyed his father. He obeyed until death. He obeyed until the cross. But we cannot obey him. He speaks through the, his servants, but we don't obey. We just listen and say, Pastor Lazarus says this. Pastor Lazarus says this. Pastor Merlin says this. Pastor Timothy says this. Pastor Zagaria said, but what are you doing? Are you acting on what they taught you now? Are you doing what they taught you to do? We are speaking. We are speaking with our mouth, but inside it is not there. Let us do what the servants of God are commanding us to do. Let us do what the word of God is saying we must do. That's where you will be acting on what God, you will be acting on your faith. But faith alone, without words, is dead. Hallelujah. Faith alone, without words, is dead. I am not contradicting Paul. In fact, Paul and James were in one accord. They were all apostles of Jesus Christ. Your works cannot save you alone. Your faith cannot save you alone. Mix them together and see a good result. Salt is tasteful. You will enjoy your faith with works. That's why many of us, we are crying every day. Because God is not answering us. Are you believing on what you are praying for? Or you are just believing in what in your mind? If you want healing, believe that you will receive healing. Believe in your heart. Act on what you are believing in. You are a sister. You want to get married. But you are always staying in a closed room. How are they going to see you if you are not coming out? How are they going to see you if you are not bathing? You must act on what you are believing in. If you want to get married as a sister, go out. Come to the youth service so that they may see you. Hallelujah. You cannot say, I want to get married, but you are always closed inside. You don't interact with other youth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are a man. You are always looking at the sisters on the stage. But you don't act on it. How are you going to marry if you are not going to speak with the sister? You must act on what you are believing in. You will develop lust if you are just looking and not saying a thing. Hallelujah. We must act on what we believe in. Let us not just speak by our mouth. Hey, brother, hey, we are born losses. It will end there. It will lead you to spiritual life. Because you are just thinking. You are just talking about it and you are not acting. Let us be the doers of the word. Do what you are believing in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that on this point you will laugh because you want to get married. Go and bath, sister. Go and to attend the services of others. Youth, so that the brothers may see you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have the spirit of laziness. As long as I, uh, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, you must act on what you are believing in. You must act on the word of God. The prostitute Rahab, she was, made, she was justified but by what she did. She believed in God and she saved the servants of God. God made her righteous. Hallelujah. God made her righteous by what she did. A good works. Good works must accompany your faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us not just sit and relax. Let us act. If you need deliverance, walk from home and come to church and say, I need deliverance. We cannot just guess and come to your house and deliver you if you did not come to church and say, I need deliverance. Take a step. Come to church and we will deliver you. We will pray for you. But if you sit down with your demons, you will die with your demons at home. 
but do something. Act on what you are believing in. I, I believe that Jesus Christ will, will deliver me, but you don't pray. You don't read the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Study this word. Eat this word. Then you will develop faith. The promises of God are yes and amen. What he did here, he will do it for you if you believe. I cannot just believe for you. You must believe for yourself. Take the word for yourself. Hallelujah. You must act on the word of God. Do what the word of God is saying. If God heals, if Jesus Christ heals the woman with the issue of the blood, what is your situation to him? What is your situation to him? We don't mix uh, faith and doubt. They don't mix. Faith and doubt don't mix. If you believe, believe. If you doubt, doubt. Then forget about what you want. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe in God and do what he says. Jesus says, if you are my disciples, you will do what I said. Hallelujah. Don't be fooled by people who are saying if you receive salvation, there is nothing. You must not work out your own salvation. Hey, you must work out your own salvation. That is a lie of darkness. Work out your own salvation. There must be an evidence that you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. If you are troubled... You accepted Jesus Christ and you are still, still troubled. Maybe you are addicted to something. You are still troubled. Come, you will be delivered. But believe in God. God's time is the best. If you believe. Hallelujah. But we want things to be done our own way. If God does not do this way, do, if he does not do this way, it means that he is not God. It is not you who died on the cross. Who are you who want to stand in the position of Jesus Christ? Allow things to be done God's way. Believe in his word. If you really love him, keep his commandments. But we don't want, the, the, I want to hold on on my sin and say hi, this thing of the law. It is not the law. If the law was not there, you were going to continue on sinning. Because we know through the law that we must not commit adultery. But if it was not, why are you not going and steal? Because you don't believe in the law. Go and steal. Then we will know that the law does not work. But why are you not stealing? We learn from the word of God. We learn from his commandments that we must not do this. It's a sin. Let us not justify it ourselves. Let us make God be our justifier by doing the good work. He said, keep my commandments. It was not God. It was from the word of Jesus Christ. Because I know we want to believe only in the New Testament without going to the Old Testament. The words that Jesus Christ was quoting when the devil was tempting him, it was not from the New Testament. It was from the Old Testament. Jesus quoted what was written in the Old Testament. Read the whole Bible, then you will understand. And believe what God said. Hallelujah. Let us not fool ourselves. Let us not fool ourselves. If you want to see the power of God, you must believe in him. You must believe in him. Those who have cars, those who drive, they know that there is no car that can move without petrol. So your faith without works cannot work. It is dead. There is no car that can move without petrol. It will be a magic or a miracle. You must pour petrol if you want to move. Then there are things that you must do so that you will enjoy your Christianity. That's why we are always complaining. We are always complaining because I, as long as 
as long as the pastor lay hands on me, you must believe. When they lay hands on you, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is touching me, not them. But if you like, you will start to judge. Ah, it's evangelist Claudius. I, I don't like him. Ah, it's like you are rejecting your own deliverance. Believe in God and do what he says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot just sit down and relax. Children of God, let me speak to the leaders, the pastors, the, the evangelists. We preach. Yes, we preach about love. We preach about all these things, the promises of God. A person is here at church with the torn trousers. You deliver, you pray for him. Ah, go away, brother. Go in peace. De James says it is faith without work. You cannot just pray for a person and leave him like that with a torn trouser. You must do something. That is a practical gospel. That is love. Clothe those who do not have clothes. Give food to those who are hungry. That is practical faith. Hallelujah. When you are saved, when you accepted Jesus Christ, there must be change. Your ways, the way you do things must change. You cannot remain the same. There must be a drastic change. People who know you or who knew you before you were born again, when they see you, they must know that there is a different person there. Let us preach the gospel and do what the word is saying. It is not good for me to stand here and preach about love and not show love to other people. Let me be, be the doer of the word. Let me preach about love and do it. That's where I am following the command of Jesus Christ. Let us do the will of God. Faith produces good works. But good works only cannot produce faith. There are people who are giving outside there. But they don't know. They, are, they did not accept Jesus Christ. They don't have faith in Jesus Christ. So their, their good works are useless. But if you, inside the heart of, of house of God, you have faith and mix it with the good works, then you have a genuine faith. We study the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and it ends here. The work, dololo. We don't do what the word is saying. Children of God, do what the word is saying. There is no office where you can go and meet Jesus Christ. The word of God is Jesus Christ himself. So if he says, do what I have commanded you here, and you don't do it, you said I accepted you. When are you going to get what you want? We are delaying ourselves. We are delaying our blessings. We are delaying our miracles because it's only here. Hallelujah. Let us be the doers of the word. Faith alone without work is dead. I still remember on the book of Acts about the lady. The, the children of God were praying. They were praying. You know, they were praying. They were sweating. I want to show you that faith and doubt don't work together. They were praying for the, a miracle. But when a miracle comes, they doubt. So let us believe what the word of God says. Don't pray if you do not believe. Pray because you believe. Pray that it shall happen. God's way is not our way. God's plans are not our plans. Pray believing in him that he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ himself says in his word that there are those who are saying Lord, Lord with their mouth. But what is inside is something else. 
We are saying Lord and Lord, 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 with our mouth, let us be the doers of the word. Take care of the children of God. Take care of the poor. That's what it means to do the commands of God. This Bible, it is not there for you to just put it in the pillow, under the pillow, and sleep on top of it. You must read and believe it. You must read and believe the word of God. Yes, we are here to help you as the servants of God. But your faith matters. What is inside you matters. Read and understand the word of God. Read and do the word of God. Hallelujah. Rahab was, was justified by what she did. Faith without work does not help other people. It is a selfish faith. It thinks about itself only. It thinks you think only think about you, 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 you only. You don't help others. That is a selfish faith. James says we must help our brothers and sisters. There must be a different between you and the non-believer. Let us show, let us do the word of God. Faith without work cannot prove the evidence of your salvation. You cannot just come to me and say, I am saved. I, I believe in God. Do something. I must see something in you that will make me know that really this is the child of God. You know, an empty tin. We put things, we put things, then we go. The label is just there. We are just happy because we are called Christians. It's just a label. It's just a label. But if you have, you are full of the word of God. Let's say you are 18, that tin of Coke. You have a good label. You are bright. And there's something inside. When I come and step on you, nothing will happen. Because you are full of the word of God. You are full of faith. You are full of the works. Then when they are combined together, no one can shake you. Nobody can shake you. Read the word of God. Believe in the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us be the doers of the word. James says, a person who does not do what the word of God says. He is like a person who go and look in the mirror. You look and you see yourself. Then when you turn from the mirror, you forget who you are. You no longer know who you are. It is a person who read the word of God and not do what the word of God is saying. You are like a person who forget himself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Titus 1.6 it says, they confess with their mouth. Only their mouth. But what they are doing is different from what they confess. It's in the mind. It's in the mind. You know, you hear people saying, Jesus, Jesus. You follow, you read, but stay here. It must go in the heart. Second Corinthians 5, 17. It says, can we read it? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. In NIV it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Hallelujah. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has gone. The new has come. Why is the old still there? But you stand here and say, I accept, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. It's because you only do it, you did it with your mouth. But your faith is not there. If you believe in it, do it. Hallelujah. If you believe in it, do it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are we going to do the will of God? 
Are we going to follow the instruction of God? Hallelujah. May we all rise. Let us not just be the hearers of the word. Let us be the doer of the word. The demons, they believe in Jesus. They even tremble when he comes. So let there be a difference between us and demons. Let us believe and accompany our beliefs with the good work. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it was not bad. I am not here to condemn anyone. I just want us to walk through the way of faith, knowing what we are doing. Please don't be condemned. If you were not doing what the word of God is saying you must do, accept corrections. Corrections are there to make you grow. They are not there to destroy you. A wise person accepts corrections. A wise person accepts corrections. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.